Let's talk about some new insights into prostate health, but specifically new insights emerging involving the microbiome, the gastrointestinal microbiome. Now, it should come as no surprise, right, that the prostate gland is somehow subject to changes in the gastrointestinal microbiome. After all, if you're going to have your prostate gland examined, all it takes is a finger in the rectum, and it's right there. In other words, it's just millimeters, if that, away from the rectal microbiome. So it's likely that the composition of microbes in the rectum, right there next to the prostate, is likely a major player via possibly translocation, that is the movement of microbes from the rectum, from the stool in the rectum, into the prostate. It may also just be via contiguity, that is, nearness to an inflammatory source, that is, all the microbes, especially proteobacteria species like E. coli and salmonella, right there in the rectum. So it comes no surprise that the composition of microbes in the rectal microbiome would have a role on fourth, the microbes that are involved, there's, there's some inconsistency in the handful of studies that have been performed. So it's not quite clear if there are specific microbes that are beneficial, specific microbes that are harmful. But know that it's likely that the rectal microbiome, thereby the colonic microbiome, is a major player in prostate health. We have some other signs that this might be true. You know, if we took about 100 men and looked at them via biopsy for evidence of prostatitis, that is inflammation of the prostate gland, we would find it in the majority. About 70% of males have prostatitis, which is remarkable. It may not result in symptoms. It can sometimes. It can result in such things as urinary urgency and uh, inability to empty your bladder properly, dribbling, so there can be symptoms, but a lot of men have no symptoms. They have a silent case of prostatitis. Now, a lot of urologists will point out this is non-bacterial. Well, they don't really know that. You know why? When you culture prostatic fluid, the vast majority of microbes that could cause prostatitis are not identified by conventional methods. And that's because they try to identify microbes using culture techniques, taking that fluid and putting it in a Petri dish and seeing if microbes grow problem. A lot of the microbes that would cause prostatic inflammation cannot be cultured. This is proven true, for instance, in the urinary microbiome. It's been fa We used to think that the bladder was sterile. It's not sterile. It's got its own microbiome with microbes that largely cannot be cultured. And so it's become clear that our inability in prior years to be able to identify microbes using culture methods dramatically underestimated the number and species of microbes in the bladder and in this case in the prostate. So the majority of men, even without symptoms, have prostatitis. And it's also become clear that chronic prostatitis is the precursor. It's the process that leads to benign prostatic hypertrophy. That's where the prostate is enlarged and the guy has a hard time emptying his bladder. and it's, He's prone to urinary tract infections. And then that's why they bore out the prostate or take other methods to try to open up the urethra to allow urine to pass. So prostatitis leads to benign prostatic hypertrophy and leads to prostate cancer. So there may be great value in manipulating the gastrointestinal microbiome. Now, one very surprising finding lately is that, so we talked about how the rectal microbiome is right there next to the prostate. So I was initially skeptical that small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, SIBO or SIBO, was a player. To my great surprise, there's a recent study that showed that about 90% of men with prostate disease, especially prostate cancer, have SIBO. That is, overproliferation of fecal microbes, proteobacteria, in the colon that had then been allowed to ascend into the small intestine, the 24 feet of small intestine, where they're very inflammatory, they live and die rapidly, and then release their toxic compounds into the bloodstream. So the, uh, there's an entry of endotoxin from these microbes in the small intestine into the bloodstream, that's called endotoxemia. And if we believe that one study, the overwhelming majority of men with prostate disease have SIBO and thereby endotoxemia. So it seems as if, if we put two and two together, it's the rectal microbiome that plays a role, likely, 
but it's also the small intestinal microbiome that indirectly via endotoxin may also have an impact on prostate health. So addressing SIBO may be part of the necessary equation, necessary strategy to gain control over prostate health. Now, just getting control of SIBO also gives you better control over the colonic microbiome. So there may be added benefits there in the rectal area as well, just by addressing the overproliferation of fecal microbes, proteobacteria, in the small intestine, thereby the colon. Now, another very important observation that's very curious is that when we look at the microbial composition of men's prostates that are diseased, they have microbes from all over the body. You can find skin microbes in the prostate, like Cutobacterium acnes. You can find mouth microbes, like Porphyromonas gingivalis and Fusobacterium nucleatum. You can find urinary microbes. In other words, it seems as if the prostate, I call it the grand central station of the microbiome, for some peculiar reason, microbes from all parts of the body seem to be transacted through this little gland next to the rectum. Why? How? Don't know. Pro probably via bloodstream though, right? And so the point here is something to think about is could it be a comprehensive approach to getting a healthy microbiome in all parts of your body, skin, mouth, airway, gastrointestinal tract, stomach, Maybe these are all necessary steps to gain full control over prostate. You know, if you listen to conventional prostate conversations where they see, say things like eat more tomatoes, exercise more, don't eat processed meats, you know, are those really that important? Well, you don't need me to, uh, to, to reiterate conventional advice. I am very skeptical those things really play that much of a role. You know, if tomatoes were that important, there'd be almost no prostate disease in Italy. Of course, there's plenty of prostate disease in Italy. And so this idea that just lifestyle factors are sufficient clearly is inadequate. And so we're looking for better strategies. So think about taking steps to get a healthier rectal and gastrointestinal microbiome, including addressing SIBO, restoring microbes that are lost, like Lactobacillus roteri, Fecalobacterium, Acromancia, and that's a whole conversation of its own, of course. Some are available as probiotics. Some we ferment as a yogurt. It's not yogurt. It looks and smells like yogurt. Uh, others you can get as a probiotic. Others you just cultivate by consuming such foods as legumes or jicama or garlic and shallots, things that have fibers in them that cultivate beneficial microbes like Fecalobacterium. Another not microbe to be aware of is Lactobacillus crispatus that has proven to be a critical microbe for female health, especially vaginal and urinary health. But there's preliminary evidence to suggest that crispatus may also play a role in male health. Now, how to get it? Well, you might get some of it via sexual relations intercourse with a female partner, but should you cultivate it yourself, that is as a probiotic or as a yogurt, it does make a delicious yogurt, it's not yogurt of course, but it looks and smells like yogurt, but you can do that also. It's preliminary though, so, be rec so recognize that this is a very preliminary conversation based on the observation that men with prostate diseases, prostatitis, benign prostatic hypertrophy, and prostate cancer tend to lack Lactobacillus crispatus, and men who don't have prostate disease tend to have crispatus. The rub here is, of course, you can't prove cause and effect by that observation, but it's very, very interesting, and it could turn out to be important for prostate health. So there you have it. The emerging role of the microbiome, not just gastrointestinal, but small intestinal also, and maybe skin and mouth and other <laughs> organs that play a role in prostate health. So I think the key here is to take what I'm calling a holobiome approach to prostate health. That is address the microbiomes in all locations. And that of course we'll be discussing at greater length in future videos.